Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I would like to discuss a short story that I recently read called The Roads Must Roll by uh, Heinlein. Um, this story was first published in Astounding Magazine in June of 1940. So it is one of his older ones. The way that I came across it was through the Science Fiction Hall of Fame Part 1 which covers the years 1929 through 1964 and was edited by Robert Silverberg. Um, yeah, I've recently been reading through as much of this uh, 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 book as I can. Um, I'm only about five stories in, but this one stuck out and I thought that I would give it a review. Um, I'll be reviewing, of course, more stories from this collection uh, as, the, uh, as the channel moves on. Um, but yes, this is about The Roads Must Roll by uh, Robert Heinlein. Um, I will be, uh, there will be spoilers in this review. However, this story is not twisty, so the spoilers won't really affect your read of it. Uh, but if you like to avoid all spoilers, I suggest that you uh, stop the video for now, read the story first, and then come back for the review. Um, but again, you uh, these these spoilers won't really uh, affect your read because this is a pretty straightforward story without a lot of twists. Um, so this story takes place uh, in the future. It doesn't go into exactly when, what time in the future that it is, but um, it's definitely in the future, and it is um, about transportation. Of course, it's called The Roads Must Roll, so that uh, that's pretty obvious. Uh, but in this case, he has a very unique view uh, from 1940 about transportation in the future. Um, he talks about the fact that uh, as cars developed, they uh, became more common. There's a line in the story where he says um, there's a point in uh, that we had one car for every two people. And I think he included that in uh, as a point of how um, amazing it was that so many cars would be in existence, uh, which kind of made me giggle because now, of course, we have um, double that. Um, he talks about the fact that because everybody had control of their own vehicle, that it was chaos, that there were, were injuries constantly and that the roads were just too dangerous so in this future world, they create technology of basically moving walkways. These large, uh, and I mean huge, conveyor belts uh, that people uh, stand on and walk around on that go up to 100 miles per hour. Um, and they actually become um, what he calls moving, moving uh, road towns. And these road towns have buildings, shopping, restaurants, all of it built onto the moving uh, side or the moving roads. So basically people can, after work, go into restaurants, go shopping and uh, um, basically enjoy themselves on their commute home. So in this future, um, there are people that have to work on maintaining the road. Um, and this is kind of what the story concerns itself with. Uh, the, the story actually opens at the, uh, um, a meeting that is taking place at a Sacramento sector guild hall. This is a building, uh, room inside the, uh, area underneath these moving walkways. And these are huge industrial areas underneath the moving walkways that stretch just as long as the roads do, um, so we start with a meeting taking place. A lot of uh, technicians um, that work underneath the roads having a meeting talking about whether or not they should go on strike um, and talking about the fact that uh, it's very unfair that they work so hard um, and have to um, deal with what they consider unfair conditions. Um, another character uh, or one of the technicians at this point stands up, um, and gives a speech about, they should be happy to be workers and they should be happy that they are, um, such important workers in this society. Um, but he is interrupted and, uh, quickly afterwards, um, a man named Van Cleek, who is, uh, higher up in the echelons of the company that runs these roads. 
he stands up um, and starts agreeing with a lot of what the workers are saying about going on strike, that they deserve more. At this point, the uh, story has an incredibly jarring, almost almost in the middle of a sentence, this, uh, um, this story changes point of view. And we go to Larry Gines, who is the chief engineer of the Diego Reno Road Town. This is the major southwestern um, road uh, road town that uh, that he is the basically the the top man in charge, um, and we kind of learn about him as a character through his uh, connection with a an Australian diplomat that showed up wanting to see how these road towns work in order to consider possibly bringing the technology to Australia. Um, so this Australian diplomat is kind of in his care through the remainder of this story. Um, he decides to show this Australian diplomat the um, road town. So they go up onto the 100 mile per hour road. They decide to go to a steakhouse and they're enjoying food, their food when suddenly the road comes to a grinding halt. Um, and this is when the action of the story really begins. The road coming to a grinding halt, unfortunately... Um, of course, uh, um, it's not really a grinding halt. It slows down and then stops, but it's a fast enough halt that it, um, has, or, or it causes some people to fall off of the, the road and fall onto the roads that are still moving very quickly underneath them. Um, and this causes a large amount of chaos and injury, uh, and we see that uh, Larry Gines, this chief engineer whose point of view we're, we're seeing the story through now, um, to kick into crisis mode. Uh, and we see him very smoothly, very efficiently um, turn into a person that's solving problems. Very militant. And we learn that he at one point was in the military, um, that he moved from the military to this position. So he basically goes into military mode. Um, he seems callous. The Australian diplomat at one point um, talks about that he seems very callous. Uh, but Heinlein allows us to go into Larry Gein's head and see that he is deeply upset by the destruction that the stopping of this road has caused, but that he doesn't have time uh, to consider or be emotional about it because he needs to solve the problem before any more casualties occur. That's the basic plot of the story. From here on out, we are uh, in a kind of a military situation. We see him create a band of warriors. Um, they find out that um, Van Cleek who was the uh, uh, engineer that was talking to the people earlier, um, has incited a revolution and uh, um, is trying to get the workers to take over and take control of the roads. And we watch as Larry Gines very expertly uh, puts this revolution down and deals with uh, Van Cleek, the uh, leader of the, uh, the revolutionaries. Um, and it is very interesting, very enjoyable read. The action is beautifully written. Um, but that's kind of the basic plot of the entire story. Um, the, the character Van Cleek is interesting. He's interested in, or he's an advocate for what, uh, um, Heinlein calls functionalism. Uh, do note that this is not the functionalism that is the sociological theory that we know today. This is something unique to Heinlein that he made up. Um, and the concept of functionalism is that one's status and level of material reward in a society must and should depend on the functions one performs for that society. So basically the concept is um, that we should look at the um, worth of the job that people do um, and pay them accordingly uh, with status and, of course, monetary reward. Um, this is a really interesting concept, um, one that I think is still 
actually brought up and thought about today quite often. Um, but uh, you find out very quickly that Heinlein um, considers this the philosophy of the, uh, the bad guys in his story. Um, the functionalists are the ones that are having the revolution. Um, at one point he mentions uh, that they are trying to replace the democracy that already exists uh, with their functionalism. Um, and of course the person that is um, most connected to functionalism is Van Cleek. And he is shown to be a really uh, um, bad guy bad guy, a bad character as the story goes on. Uh, moving on, there's a couple of uh, things I'd like to look at. First off, the action in this story is incredibly well done. Uh, it plays out perfectly in your head. The words ha disappear and you can just see the image in your head like it's a movie. Um, it's never boring. It's never slow. You're interested in the forward movement of the, uh, the little military group. Uh, that uh, that Gaines has put together, um, and it doesn't overstay its welcome. It's it's beautifully written. Heinlein is a solid writer. His prose makes sense. They aren't cumbersome. They really they really move the story along at a, at a perfect clip. Um, the tech, the tech in the story. This is a science fiction story, so we want good tech. The tech is very interesting. Um, he at one point rides, uh, I can't remember exactly what they're called, the gyroscopic bikes. Basically, these are motorcycles with one wheel that are only as, uh, or are about the same width as a, as a, a grown man's shoulders. So they can get into little spots in this industrial area underneath the walkways. Very cool stuff. Um, the cover of Astounding Magazine is the only time this story has been illustrated in any way. And you can see that they chose to draw one of these bikes on the cover of that, uh, which we'll put up right over here. Um, the characters um, at first seemed to be very well rounded. We find out that Gaines has a wife that's worried about him at home. Um, Van Cleek is, is, um, worried about the workers and their plight, but as the story goes on, unfortunately, the characters, in my opinion, seem to lose depth and became caricatures. Um, Gaines was obviously a stand-in for the perfect soldier, the way that he is described as handling this a very stressful situation is in the most perfect militant way possible. And of course, coming at it from that perspective saves the day. Um, Van Cleek, who started as what seemed like a character that was very interested in the plight of the workers, uh, is eventually torn down to a sweating, narcissistic um kind of a, a, a monster more than a character. Um, and what this does, unfortunately, is really points out the politics that Heinlein was, was trying to discuss through this story. This is obviously an analogy if you think about 1940, um, what was going on in politics at the time. This is an analogy probably for uh, um, Jimmy Hoffa and the... Uh, Teamsters at the time, um, the unions becoming corrupt and uh, and so on and so forth, uh, and I feel like that the that his desire to express these politics brought down the story and brought down the characters, um, and became so obvious that the the story itself was less interesting. Uh, because of that. And this is something that I find happens with Heinlein a lot. Heinlein is a controversial figure now. Um, many people will read his work and wonder if he is straight up a warmonger or um, a very right-wing conservative um, thinker or if all of this is tongue-in-cheek. Uh, Starship Troopers is a perfect example. Um I find for me that the politics, the theme, 
that he was trying to push in this story uh, was detrimental to the story. Instead of helping it, it took away from the enjoyment of this new technical world um, and these characters that he had created and instead kind of seemed like he was, by the end of it, standing up on a soapbox, um, yelling his um, beliefs out to the world. Um, in the end, uh, it didn't. Uh, it wasn't my favorite of the ones I've read from the Science Fiction Hall of Fame, um, but it was still an enjoyable read. Um, if you are interested in an awesome, uh, different look at transportation, it's a great story to read. The tech is wonderful and the, uh, um, the action is very well done. Uh, if you don't like your stories to lean too heavily on analogy for, uh, political concepts, maybe I would stay away for me, personally, I would give Robert Heinlein's The Roads Must Roll a 6 out of 10. Um, it, it, it's a little bit above average, but overall I think that it's, it's for me, a piece that uh, just because of those character flaws um, couldn't really make it uh, into, into the top uh, of the uh, ratings there. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this review. Uh, if you do, if you uh, enjoyed it, please make sure to like the video and subscribe and we'll see you next time.